go out and work. Are you feeling like a shadow of yourself? Is your mood on its way down? You could be suffering from low THC, also known as cannabinoid deficiency, caused by 77 years of government interference via prohibition. Do you live in a medical cannabis state or the District of Columbia? Are you over the age of 18 and seeking non-toxic natural health, well-being, and peace of mind? Ask your doctor if cannabis may be right for you. After 10,000 years of recorded human use and 77 years of failed prohibition on the world's most extensively tested plant, the results are in. Cannabis has no known lethal dose and is arguably the safest and most comprehensive therapeutic substance known to man. Cannabis remained in the United States for until 1941, and cannabinoids are currently patented by the federal government as an anti-inflammatory U.S. patent 6630507. Human brains have cannabinoid receptors. Cannabinoids are lubricants in the human body. Due to prohibition, our bodies have been denied essential lubrication. Imagine never changing or adding to the oil in your car. The use of cannabis for low THC may cause immediate relief, including a general feeling of well-being, chronic smiling or laughing, feelings of euphoria, increased creativity or clarity, a greater appreciation for music and art, the desire to dance, increased feelings of inspiration, compassion or unity, a need for truth and justice or you may wake feeling more well-rested than usual. It's undetermined to know exactly how many symptoms the use of cannabis may alleviate because of federal prohibition. There were dozens identified in the 1909 Eli Lilly Pharmaceutical Handbook. Currently, over 80% of the population supports the right to use cannabis therapeutically, and 92% of its users have declared significant non-toxic relief. The most common side effects, which are usually mild to moderate and may fade or disappear completely over time, are dry mouth and drowsiness. Other more serious side effects can include growing and repairing brain cells and DNA or improved vision, may prevent Alzheimer's dementia, glaucoma, nausea, and suicide may provide relief from autism, asthma, anorexia, arthritis, AIDS, cancer, Crohn's, depression, epilepsy, fibromyalgia, gout, IBS, insomnia, MS, migraine, pain, Parkinson's, PTSD, and spasticity. Use caution while driving or doing other physical activities until you know how cannabis affects you. May cause paranoia or nervousness specifically caused by real-life government intervention in your quest for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the USA. Ask your doctor if cannabis may be right for you. Brought to you as a public, a public service, service announcement by the People's Plant, a campaign of conscience. Hey, good afternoon and welcome to Rosemary's World of Cannabis. I was talking to dead air. Sorry, guys. It happens when you're doing live radio like this. Sometimes I do. I want to apologize to all those that was listening. It is 81 degrees outside. As you can tell, the heat has got me a little loopy. It's been a crazy day already. Wow. <laughs> Thanks to my therapist, Eric. You did a job today, man. I'm hurting. <laughs> I am truly hurting. But to get off of that, to talk to everybody else today, I hope y'all having a great Wednesday. We're in the middle of the week, although it's going to be a short week, and I do mean short for some of y'all that's got the 9 to 5 Monday through Friday. Yes, indeed. On today's show, we're going to have Michael Lee. Um, we're going to just have a general conversation today about whatever he wants to talk about, and I'm quite sure it's going to be a very interesting conversation. I've enjoyed um, all the shows I've done so far the past few weeks. I mean, it's been incredible. And once again, I'd like to thank my sponsor and co-producer uh, co of this show, um, 710 Radio Rick. You have done an outstanding job. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to let me be myself and do what I do best, and that's run my mouth. Good afternoon, Doc Honeycutt. I hope you're able to listen to the show while she's taking care of everybody over in Charlotte. I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight when we get on the air on Access 21 in Charlotte. If you're not in the Charlotte area, Google Access 21, and it'll, you can see the show uh, online as well. Um, wow. It was one thing I wanted to bring up with y'all real quick before my caller calls in today. Um, I'm actually celebrating a, a milestone for me. I'm celebrating four years today of being back behind the microphone after a 30 some year hiatus. And it feels great, guys. I mean, a lot has changed in over 30 plus years, but some things don't change. And that's the desire to do what you do best. And, um, Ivan, if you're somewhere out there listening, man, I can't thank you enough for what you have done and what you have brought back into my life that I truly, truly would not have known about if you wouldn't have came in and out of my life for the brief period of time that we got to do our show on um, WGIB in Charlotte, Let's Talk Sports with Ivan Keith. If it's any way possible, you can Google that and bring those up. Man, those were some great shows. Hey, hey, boss, man, I hate to tell you this. I'm not in the Deliria Kona. I'm still on the mic. I'm still talking about cannabis, and everybody knows my name. So uh, thank you for pushing me the way you did. And like I said, man, I miss you, and God bless you. But um, back to the world of cannabis now. Um, wow, I was trying to look for this one story, but Facebook is like driving me crazy. Okay, here we go. I don't know if y'all seen this yet, but you want to check out the Now This um, that does the cannabis. Um, Hawaii 
wants to get away completely with the word marijuana. And I am so happy to see that a state is making a step towards getting rid of that meaningful word. You know, that you know, they're putting it out there that marijuana was used, you know, to associate it with Mexican immigrants as well as black people and Indian, Indian immigrants. And anti marijuana shorthand for called anti migrant. And Richard Nixon, like I always been telling y'all, even misspelled the word marijuana. So since the spelling is more, you know, it should be, you know, gone. Hawaii's going to pass that bill. I feel that that bill's going to pass in Hawaii. And Hawaii, I applaud you for putting an end to the word marijuana. I applaud you for doing it. And thank you now this week for um, bringing that to our attention. Um, Y'all, if you don't have um, now this is weed, hey, check them out. They have some pretty interesting stuff on there. And I like to give people shouts out um, when you see such things as that. Also, one more. I'm still waiting on my call to call in. I'm gonna bring up one more item that was um, that was really interesting that came up. Oh, oh, I, I got one for y'all. I don't know how many of y'all use Airbnb, but if you do, I know of an Airbnb that is 420 friendly. I mean, very 420 friendly. They're gonna put you some um, mass master gear in the room. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, it's in um, D.C. Um, it's a penthouse apartment with fireplace, parking space. And it is $350 a night. But it's very 42020 friendly. If you go to the District of Columbia in Washington, you cannot smoke in the buildings. And if you do, that's a $250 fine. If you really think you got to smoke and be there... This is the way to go. Um, I haven't shared. I'm going to share it. Um, I believe I shared it in the Miss Green Jeans page. If not, I will share it then um, as well. But yeah, I thought that was really interesting um, that um, they would put an Airbnb up like that to tell uh, everybody, hey, we got you. You might get smoked nowhere. But it's going to, you know, plus they say they're going to hook you up with some cool gear. So. I'm not trying to do no plugs for anything, but if they want to look out for somebody so I could go ahead and do this, um, you know, hey, look up, you know, I'm always in D.C., y'all, look me up. So um, hit me up on that Airbnb if you want to hit, hit me up and we can talk about that. Okay, call back. <laughs> they say they tried to call. Let me go ahead and get this straight real quick. All right. Hang on, guys. That's one thing about being on live. Because um, as we both know, we did not hear the phone ring. Make sure I gave the right number. Okay, we can do that too. All right, guys. I'm going to do a um, rarity today. We're going we gonna to do, hey, things change up for a reason. So we're not going to argue the point about how it goes. We're going to go ahead and do this like this, okay? All right, then. We're going to do it the old-fashioned way. We carry y'all back about 30 years. So you're going to hear a couple of dings. Oh, okay. Sorry, didn't. Uh, let's see if that works. We're going to find out in a second. All right. We got a run, ringy dingy. Two ringy dingies. We're hoping we're calling the right person. If not, they're going to be live. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Michael, I don't know what's going on, but I'm glad we got you. Um, welcome to Rosemary's World of Cannabis. How are you today? Oh man, things have been crazy all day. I got a new therapist. He, oh man, he. I think he tried to kill me. I think he wanted to think both of us were back in the military today. Then that time I leave there, get just about home, had to jump the daughter off. So I had to go get a box to jump the car off. Then I had to go get the grandbaby because I forgot they're getting out early. So man, I have been busy this morning. I was like, Phew. I done broke some speed limits trying to get here to get this show done because I was not going to miss you, Michael. How are you today? 
been I'm good. I'm, I'm just a little tired. I've been uh, staying up day and night trying to do some nerd stuff. Do some what now? What's that? What um you do some who now? I didn't catch that. Doing nerd stuff. Oh nerd stuff. Oh okay. Well, your yeah. what's your definition of nerd stuff? That's an interesting concept. Okay, let's see. Can we fix that a little bit? Is that better? Um, if you're trying to listen to me on the show, you're gonna have an echo, so you're gonna have to turn off your um or turn down your computer or however you listen to me. That's why you got an echo. Oh, I think it's just the phone. I don't even have it on. I'll still work with it. I can hear you a little bit better. Okay. That is one thing. That is one thing. I, I'm, first off, I, I guess I'll say I'm honored to be on the show. Like, uh, yeah, that's one thing about everybody else. They try to keep it 100, and you, you keep it 420. <laughs> well, that's the point. I mean. That's the way you have to do it because I listen to other shows and don't get me wrong. I ain't saying people do shows in a fashioning way. They want to do them that fits their personality. I cannot. Sorry. I, I wish I could do a straight lace show like that, but that just ain't in my DNA. I want to talk to people where they stand and where they be, you know, in their circumstance. I can't. I don't like a format. I'm going to be honest with you. I am not one of the people that like format, um, period. And if I'm asked to do one, I'll probably decline it because that's not being real about whatever situation you're talking about and um i've been in scripted things before and i didn't care for it so um like i said this is the way as long as 710 radio and iheart radio let me keep doing it the way i do it i'll keep doing it because the people that's always what they always wanted you know they want somebody out there that's gonna let gonna tell the truth they want somebody that they know that's gonna be honest with them and gonna be 100 you know and I'm like this on the air as well as off. And that's why my popularity keeps growing because we need that in our life. We need somebody that's going to be straight up and say, if you're in your circumstance or in your mess, hey, you wrong for that. You know, and don't feel like, you know, the demeanor or whatever the case may be. I, it, it like this here. I lost a good job four years ago today doing just what I'm doing right now. Letting people know the truth about cannabis and I'll never stop. So that's why I celebrate. I am celebrating hard today because being the person that I am now is way better than the person I used to be in the past. And I have yeah. cannabis to thank for all that. Yeah. I mean, one thing I do like about you, there's all these special interest groups. And I know you got your special interests, but you're about everybody, not just about your special interests. So. That's one thing I do love about you. Well, thank you very much. And that's the way it should be. I mean... The point is this, everybody going to have their opinion, no matter what. If we all thought of like this, would be a boring world. It'd be extremely boring. So you have to keep in that mindset that everybody has a voice. And that's why I'm so happy once again that 710 and iHeart gave me this opportunity because a lot of people that's coming on this show possibly would never get those opportunities. Because when these shows are done sometimes, and I'm not talking about everybody's show, because everybody's show is different. But the few shows that I have listened to, they want to talk to the growers. They want to talk to the dispensary owners. They want to talk to the patients, you know. But they want to hear the gloom and gloom. They, they don't want to hear about the rights, the fight, and everything else. I want it all out there. I want people to understand and realize when these laws are passed, it is blood, sweat, and tears going behind getting these laws passed and it ain't happening overnight and it darn show it ain't like we got tons of money coming into this fight i mean we've been in a war for over 40 years of a plant that grows out the ground all you got to do is put water to it and i ain't gonna give out the rest of the ingredients because i ain't trying to get locked up in the state of south carolina for talking about committing a crime <laughs> if you know what I'm, <clears throat> excuse me if you know what i'm saying No, it's uh, not. Not for 420. Not for 420, at least. No. No, by no means. I mean, um, we don't have some of the harshest, but I'm going to tell you like this here. If you've seen the South Carolina prison system, you know differently that they're very harsh. I've never been locked up in the state of South Carolina, and I ain't trying to go. So, uh, <laughs> so we just going to keep it real, you know. And like I tell everybody, when I decided to finally come out, I had a lot of people upset with me because of the area where we live at in South Carolina. Um, and I think I even did it even, you know, when I came out, I came out in more ways than imaginable. First of all, my in-laws did not know I used cannabis. 
They didn't find that out till I moved here. Um, then when I came out the cannabis closet in the church, that really was not good. But hey, it's like this. And I'll say this to the day they lay me down. If I can't hide from God, why am I going to hide from man? Yeah. I mean, that's just keeping it real, man. I mean, that's the only way I know to be. Because if I'm supposed to be a true Christian and practice my faith, that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to talk out both sides of your neck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's, I mean, honestly, that's how I see this. This, uh, I guess you could say, as an issue, is just basically to me, it's religious too. I mean, it's not some made up, you know, uh, high religion or anything like that. I mean, the first page of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, it, it says it on the first page, you know, right there in uh, Genesis 1 29 and 30 that he gave it to everybody all over the earth and every creature too, and he called it meat, not drugs. So. That's correct. That is so correct, and that's why more and more i don't know about in your area but i want to uh, see if i can get uh pastor crump he is here in rock hill and i want to see if i can get him to come on the air and we have a discussion about it like i said my schedule has been so crazy i mean with everything popped up so quickly with iheart and then doing with dr honeycutt and then i got some other things in the works and then on top of that i'm getting ready to do a book and some other stuff that I will be bringing out to the audience shortly. Um, like I said, in the past three weeks, it's been some incredible stuff going on. And I don't, I know it wasn't only me. I had people and I had God first because when you put him first, everything works out for you. I mean, every single solitary thing. I'm not trying to make this a religious thing by no means because I know everybody don't pl practice the same way as you and me. But the thing is this. Whatever keeps you going, you know, and I have seen some dark down moments. I mean, I've seen a lot of dark down moments in the last past um, four years. But yeah. by me doing what I do, working with cannabis and, you know, speaking out, speaking about my situations to help others that they won't fall in those traps of uh, see these things coming, say, hey, um, Rosemary, hey, Miss Green Jeans, you know, talked about these things, and she said, you know, whatever I said. And each day, you know, what things that I'm learning from people like yourself is that how much I am helping people. This is therapy for me. Believe it or not, this is my therapy. And when I talk to people like you, online, offline, when I talk to Wanda, when I talk to all these other people that I talk to in my life now, which is well reaching 2,000 people, I have a lot of conversations and I can't remember everybody's name, but my circle has gotten so deep. I mean, with cannabis people that, that I mean, they eat, live, sleep cannabis, period. And that's a blessing. It takes people a lifetime to touch as many people I have in the short three years that I've been doing this and four years I've been back on the mic and the other few years that I was doing it, but nobody knew. So yeah. thank you. I mean, thank you and thank everybody else that, you know, has taken time out to come on the shows. If it wasn't this show, another show without you guys, I can't do this. You know, I can't talk dead air by myself. I tried it. Don't work. I'm a boring person just talking for 45 minutes, 25 minutes. I drive everybody crazy, include myself. I have to have somebody to talk back to. So, with oh, yeah. y'all doing all this, I mean, man, it's, I mean, I can never, ever, ever give back what everybody has given me. It's no way possible. And the only way I can do it is do what I do. Yeah, well, you try trying. I mean, I, I gotta, you know, you gotta thank God for you for one and applaud you too because uh i mean there's, there's a lot of older people you know the vets and uh just older people in general that they're, they're not connected they don't watch the news every day and they don't know all the research coming out and i mean you out there you you know you, you're not you know meeting them and, and getting their names and talking to them but you're still fighting for them so you know i do gotta applaud you for that that is awesome i mean you are trying to give back that, that's something that definitely shows yeah well thank you like i said um if I started naming everybody that has been in my life, 
Colorado, you know who all you are. I would be naming just in Colorado for at least 15 minutes. D.C., I'd be naming for 10 minutes. Um, Missouri, I'd be naming for at least a good three to four minutes. Texas, I'd be naming. I mean, all the places I've been, you know, and all, all the people I've met from all across the country and across um, several countries, I know cannabis friendly people in 15 different countries. They're, the countries are not cannabis friendly by no means, but they love the herb just like we do. And I'm, re I'm reaching beyond the United States, which is a dream come true for me because that has been my message. We all live the same life. We might speak in a, same, a different dialect, but we all the same people. We all need this plant. And it's people that get their, I mean, they lose their life immediately behind this plant in some countries, which is crazy. You think the United States is bad? They just throw you, lock you up and throw you away. It's some countries you die because of a plant. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've noticed, uh, I mean, the other countries, I'm surprised some of them are coming ahead of, of the U.S. even. And uh, I, I don't know if you've, you've caught on what's going on in Australia. There's a family there who's, uh, they, they're, uh, they're, I want to say they're cannabis activists. I mean, they just basically come out saying that they think it's helping their son. But uh, they, they've had their son kidnapped uh, in the past, let's say, month. And um, I believe his name's Chase. If you look yes, his name is Australia. Chase. And um, we're working out logistics right now between me and H and J and Bob. Um, they're from Australia. I'm glad you, that's a good segue of bringing it. That's why they haven't been on the show yet because of the time difference and everything. We're going to work out the logistics on this, and we're going to bring that show to you. That's why they have not been on the area. It's not the fact that they backed out or anything. It's just between the time difference and um, a couple other things that we're trying to work out. I know that um, Bob and Jay were kind of separated for a minute, and I wanted both of them to do the show together. So um, they should be back together as of today. I'm hoping to catch them. If I had to stay up late tonight to catch them, um, so we can get the final logistics worked out on that so we can bring that story yes i'm very much aware of it but thank you you stay see you staying on top things that's why i wanted to bring you on the show today but this is the question i want to ask you i want to bring you back to south carolina and um i know it's a touch, touchy subject but um i really want to know what's going on in south carolina why all the diversity opinion I guess but I, honestly I just think it's a class war I mean there's, there's so many people who are just working to keep their paycheck and um, you know to, to keep this uh, public figure they have built up in, in their job and you know they, they're working against the people sadly so there's so many people that just not only need it you know they want this I mean there's been so much discussion about it uh, I mean I, in the simplest form I mean I hear people that you know they just smoke it you know whenever they're mad and all of a sudden they're calmed down and you know there's, there's no more uh, animosity in them. And, and that to me alone I mean that's amazing that you know they, they go from basically you know putting other people in danger to they, they're no longer a danger themselves and it's all because of a plant yeah I, I jokingly say sometimes um some of the police need to have a cup about three or four roll joints somewhere in their car or something they approach somebody like that like hey man hey take this smoke this and you'll be all right yeah and I, i'm a little disappointed in south carolina because I, I mean by law we're an agricultural state so i mean for all these other the, the doctor professions and the lawyer professions and i mean even real estate agents are making money off this when you know we come out with this news and hey we're going to legalize people start you know wanting to swarm in and then, uh, you know, some of them, they, they actually come here, they move here, and uh, they get disappointed themselves because they realize that it's not as advanced as they would think. But, I mean, as an agricultural state, I mean, we've been waiting, I think, three years now. Oh, yes. I mean, we, yeah, we, we could have grown enough crops now to at least supply our own. And, I mean, South Carolina's a poor state. You know, don't take me wrong. This isn't some big, elaborate, like, scheme of money that needs to be thrown at this just to support this small group of people that, that actually need it. But, you know, even still, that's not been done. There's nothing being done, uh, you know, sustainable, I guess you could say. It's all being done politically. And agriculture is almost being thrown out of this. So in, in that aspect, I mean, I'm real disappointed because it, it's something that could be grown as simple as a tomato. And, and yet it's, you know, just as beneficial and way more so. And, and yet 
and consider it dangerous and consider it basically something that, uh, you know, schedule one drug with all these other deadly drugs and, you know, there's no news of anybody dying from it. Yeah, you die behind if the police catch you in certain, uh, certain situations and the key words is, I smell weed and you look like me, you can die behind marijuana, so, um, as they say it. But what I want to bring into a segue of this is, you know, we got the hemp bill passed. You know, the governor signed it into law. And now we, I think we're waiting on June 1st. I haven't looked on the hemp bill yet, to be honest with you, because I've been so busy with um, trying to get ready for um, the, 10th of next, uh, the 10th of next month, which I'm going to be down in the town hall in, um, in Charlotte. And I'm um, trying to get ready for that. So I hadn't really got a chance to look into that. I need to get a hold to uh, Rick. Ricky, um, what is Rick? Ricky Lofton? I need to get a hold to him and bring him on the show where he can give me and the listeners a class on him in the South Carolina law because I guarantee you he knows it down to a science. And he's been, I mean, he's been on their backside. I mean, I know on my on my personal page alone, I've got at least 50 to 75 letters that he stunt to different parts of the state trying to get that hemp bill passed. But uh, I hear there's a lot of slack behind it, and if I find it so, and it's not equal to everybody, I will be calling it out, and I will be calling the legislatures and the Black Caucus to see can we get something changed about it, because um, it's a lot of bills that's being written is not fair to everyone in, in the respect of being able to grow the plant, being able to use the plant in that form. But what kills me is this. Speaking of now that we can grow hemp, you know I posted this up on my personal page. I want to know why South Carolina or some people think we can't grow cannabis on our own. Like you said, we're a farming state. Who's to say, and I know I'm going to catch some slack from people that's listening to this. I don't care. But I still state this. If we're capable of giving the farmers the right to grow hemp, why can't we as citizens and taxpayers of the state of South Carolina have the same option to grow cannabis six six plants, three immature, three mature, if we have people over the age of 21 in our household or if they're a cannabis patient? So, I mean, the, 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 I mean, the excuses I've been getting, I'm sorry, folks. I understand your point, but understand mine. We got a hemp bill that's been passed once again. We so far back in that caveman racial mentality that we gonna keep thinking this way for how much longer? I'm gonna be honest with you. The the clock is ticking. When um, December 31st comes around, I'm out of the political mess. I'll be doing this show, but I will not be disinvolved into this because personally, I see it racial. But I know South Carolina, uh, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's like living in the twilight zone for me. I mean, exactly. It, yeah, everything's uh, backwards, it, it seems like, almost. And one thing I do like about Ricky, you mentioned him, is he, he looks out for everybody with these uh, suggestions he throws out. Like when he's in, sitting in a session or in one of these legislative meetings, if he talks, it, it, it's about, you know, hey, we need to look out for this aspect. We need to look out for that aspect. And, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's great, like, because there's not people like that all over, and there does need to be somebody, you know, voicing their soul and voicing their opinion out like that, and he's great for that. I, I love him for that. Me too. I mean, if I need, if and, and a lot of people, I hook Rick, uh, Ricky up with a lot of people that's on my page that's wanting to know about him, and if you don't know who Ricky Lofton is, please go to Facebook, go to uh, my Facebook page, Rosemary Wallace. You click on Ricky Lofton's name, and if you really are serious about him, that's the man you want to talk to. I, I, I mean, he runs circles around me. I ain't going to even try to lie. I mean, the man just blew my mind the first time I met him, and I consider him a dear, dear, dear friend here in South Carolina. I mean, he's helped me to understand South Carolina law, how it works, and everything else. So I owe Ricky a lot, so... Yeah, that's the man down here as far as the hemp policy is concerned. He is on top of it. Yeah. Now, you mentioned we, I mean, we now have the hemp bill passed. Um, we do have other laws passed. And, I mean, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just going off of what I've researched, what I've read, basically. But um, Chapter 45, Title 46 is uh, our 
our uh, agricultural law. It's called, uh, it, it's something about nuisance suits, basically, where, you know, people can't sue an agricultural operation, basically, because of what they're doing, uh, you know, with the, with, uh, basically, there's, there's a few stipulations, like for, uh, I think it's about pigs or something like that, but mm-hmm. I mean, According to the law, I mean, it bases it off a few different things, and one of them is new technology, and I consider everything coming out to be new technology. Wow. Especially with, I mean, especially with the way it's healing people and, and getting them better. And I've seen some people that, you know, their whole life haven't made sense to me and, and seen them smoke, and that, that was the one moment they make complete and total sense to me. And uh, it, it's amazing just to, to see like not not just locally but even you know you go online and you see these success stories and it's just amazing and now the news is starting to come out there, there's actually a feeding frenzy of people wanting to see this news and wanting to see this research and it's been kept from us for uh, quite a long time i mean almost 100 years i'd say and uh i mean for it to be coming out like it is just all over the place rapidly uh i can't believe south carolina hasn't caught on and I mean, as far as cannabis goes, compared to him, the, the, I mean, in my opinion, the only laws that need to be made are those protect children. And aside from that, I mean, you, you might cut people, you know, 25 and under from trying it immediately, you know, without some sort of extra adult supervision. But aside from that, I mean, I, I honestly don't see it as a danger. I, I see, you know, politics more of a danger than a plant. So. I, I guarantee you politics is more dangerous than a plant. And you brought out some very good points. And um, yeah, um, that bill is being written. So to me, where it's been, it's been written and passed so these commercial grows can come in. And that's why I have a problem with it. It's being written. So notice the key word, it's been written. So the big commercial grows can come in and grow these plants. And this, yeah. you know, and like I was telling everybody, what my biggest concern is with everybody, is everybody gonna have the same opportunity or is you gonna have it on lockdown like Florida? And Florida's got one of the biggest dog messes of all time. The 73% of the voters in the state of Florida voted for cannabis to be le- medical cannabis to be legal in the state. They still don't have a reputable legal cannabis program. That sorry about that. That um that um cannabis can be used um combustibly. You can't vape. You cannot smoke cannabis in the state of Florida because if you do you will be locked up and let me repeat this again ladies and gentlemen for those who are getting ready to go on vacation we don't want you going coming back off of probation okay hear me again you cannot smoke cannabis in the state of Florida don't say Ms. Wallace didn't tell you okay I'm, I'm just letting it be known now I said it three times. Don't, I'm going to say it the fourth time. Do not smoke cannabis in Florida. Okay? That's four. And I'll say it one more time before I get off the air. So, <laughs> it's like this. They're that serious. They locked up 14 people last week behind smoking cannabis. And that's, that's sad. That's sad. The synth- yeah, the synthetic substitutes for that are, are dumbed down. I mean, you get one synthetic cannabinoid compared to the, the array of cannabinoids you get with the plant. And... That that one synthetic substitute that they're uh, that they're you know, I can't I can't think of the word but they're singling out basically and, and putting into these synthetic drugs to, to tell people I, I mean it, it's way less beneficial and especially compared you're talking to- about the bath salts that they're they're um, legal they make them illegal especially in North Carolina um, they make them illegal they pull them off the shelves they go back to the chemist the chemists change one um formula in it they put it back out and then it's the same process all over again matter of fact the fda just approved the synthetic form of marijuana not too long ago which i still won't take because the point of it is this man is making it so i don't want it yeah no, i mean another thing is the synthetic the chemical drugs they're, they're way stronger than the natural so for somebody to, and i've seen eight eight patients do this they'll take the synthetic form that they're given and, and it's you know sometimes too strong for them whereas if you smoke it you can stop whenever it's too strong for you and and you've got your dose basically and you might have to overdose if you will exactly um, or, or over over medicate mm-hmm. and i'm gonna tell you like this here for people who don't know 
You can't over medicate on this and it won't make you feel quite so good. I've only had it to happen to me once. And that was me, you know, being green as grass, not knowing the strength of an edible. I'm like, I ate the first piece. I'm like, I'm good, you know, hell, you know, this ain't working. You know, I didn't wait 45 minutes. I messed around and ate that second piece. Woo! Man, you talking about somebody that was, I'm talking about heavy duty, super sleepy. I mean, I was so high. I woke up the next morning for two hours trying to fix my coffee. High. <laughs> so, I mean, I was lucky. I've heard more people had um, rapid heart rates and, you know, some people have even got nauseated because it was so high. So you can get too high, but once again, ladies and gentlemen, it does not kill you. Now, take too many pain medications like Percocet. Take three of them bad boys at the strength that the doctor gave you. I guarantee you will not be here in the morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, compared to the other drugs, I mean, it's just... It, like I said, it's a twilight zone. I mean, they're, they're putting it up there. Some plant, you know, they're demonizing a plant, basically. And, I mean, you know the history just as good as I do of what's been demonized. And it's, it's ridiculous that, you know, no one, except for a few cities and a few states, has, you know, overcome that stigma or even trying to overcome that stigma that is put on all these people. And, I mean, especially patients. Patients shouldn't have to deal with basically going somewhere and, and trying to get this special medicine, if you will and having the fear of being locked up sometime in between the time they, they go to the doctor and the time they get back home with the medicine. Exactly. Um, and, I mean, you know, younger people might be able to withstand that, but I don't think our older crowd should be able to, or, or should be having to go through that. Man, I'm going to be all. honest with you. Buying on the black market is even dangerous for older people now. I mean, things have got so ruthless, you know, and it's not even only here. It's country, across the country. Um, I watched the changes um, because I'm starting to fall into that category where it's like, you know, it, it's getting very, very risky because not all the time you have the time or the money to drive. And, you know, God knows the last thing you want to do is um, ask somebody to send you something through the mail. I strongly rec don't recommend that. I mean, I never done it and never will. But um, some people have, have done that. And, yeah. you know, I wouldn't by no means whatsoever. I love my freedom. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, we, we shouldn't have to pick our medicine by zip code. You know, we shouldn't be regulated by zip code. And no. We're supposed, to be, we're supposed to be the United States. And so far, we're in think about that. We're the divided states. Okay, because yeah, if you look at the map, anything that's supposed to have a southern heritage behind it, we don't have no medical cannabis. You notice that on the map? Yeah. No. Yeah, think about it. Georgia, North, South Carolina, Virginia, Kentucky, um, Florida, well, Florida. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, most people count Florida as the South, but I personally was born and raised there. I don't count it as the South because y'all got some craziness going on around here. I count it as a peninsula. So we don't apply because we got medical marijuana, even though it's not the medical marijuana it could be and should be. But um, I think once Florida gets their act together, if they go ahead and get this special session, which is truly needed. If you truly care, I'm going to put this message out there. For those who might be listening to the state of Florida, get on the phone, call your people down there, bring that phone off the hook, let them know. Y'all pay their taxes. Y'all pay their salary. Tell them to get off their ass and get a special session so you can get the medicine that you need. Because there's too many people dying that needs this plant. At least, you know, everybody going to die. We're not going to be here forever. But to get at least a quality of life so they can go into that good night with some peace and some dignity. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all I ask. Yeah, people shouldn't be attacked just because they smoke a different type of cigarette. Uh, I mean, this is nothing compared to alcohol whatsoever. Oh, alcohol, no. Like you, said, like you said, those other things would kill you. Alcohol would kill you. I mean, it, I, I've actually researched into doing hemp beer before, and I got discouraged in it because the stuff that they flavor beer with is actually toxic. Mm -hmm. so, so, 
I mean, I was surprised that that's not more, you know, out there as far as information goes, because I'm like, wow, all these people are literally drinking beer that's flavored with toxins. Hey, if they let that information be known, you know how, you know, Anheuser-Busch would be ready to commit suicide. And they're going to try to keep that a secret. That's the reason why it's so much uproar now, because the, the, the genie is out the bottle. We've been saying it for years, but now the FDA even got to say, you know, they just had on CBS News the other day about how the cannabinoids work on the control of seizures. Now, this is a clinical study that was done by the FDA. And I'm bringing this point up to all our legislators that's sitting on this panel right now. The FDA has spoken, ladies and gentlemen. Get off your ass and do your job. I can't be no plainer than that. Yeah, um, I, I, I got nothing to say about the FDA. It's all bad. <laughs> I understand that, but what I'm saying is this. Me and you both have sat up and listened to the House, the Senate, and so on and so on, saying they're waiting on the FDA to say something. I'm going to get a copy if I had to call CBS News myself to get a copy the next time we have to go in front of them, and I'm going to play that on the floor myself if I have to. I don't want to hear no more BS about that. You got your FDA, pass the damn bill. So we can go ahead and get everything straightened out that needs to be straightened out with that bill because I'm going to be honest with you. I said it yesterday and I'm saying it today. If they leave the bill as it is, we're going to have some problems. If it passed tomorrow, like it sits, it's not for everybody. Don't believe me? Go to SouthCarolina.org. Pull up your bills. Pull up S212. Read it for yourself. And I'll be glad to have an open mic next Wednesday so we can seriously talk about this because it's not enough people talking about it. They're talking about meeting here and meeting there. We need to be talking about possibly changes that need to be made to this bill because ain't no sense in getting up there at the last minute and people having heartaches about this bill. Sure, I want the bill to pass true enough, but at the same time, let's don't bullshit each other about it. Because if you got a stake in the business, I want to know. Because you should be excluded. If you got a dog in this fight where you're going to make one red cent here in the state of South Carolina, I want to know who you are. I don't want you smiling up in my face saying, I ain't going to make no money off of this. And then when this bill passed, you handed me a damn business card. If you're doing that, that's fine, well, indeed. That's cool. I'm not talking about nobody not making one red cent. You know, I'm not going to stop that. But what I am trying to stop is the lies and bullshit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it, it, South Carolina, I mean, even our hemp law, I mean, it has the word synthetics in it. It has the word chemicals in it, you know, and, and for it to be passed as an agricultural law or by an agricultural committee, like, I'm not sure if this past time it was passed by an agricultural committee, but originally it was, and, and for them to be passing a law through agricultural committee to talk about uh, pharmacological activity uh, in a hemp bill, no less, uh, I mean, that's me that's very strange you know and uh it, it's not right and the fda being solicited over and over again by all these politicians by, by these people in their uh, in their jobs basically that's coming to these meetings at the state they're over soliciting the fda i mean it, that should be a crime and i'm pretty sure it is i just can't remember what it's called mm. but um you, you know they're, they're soliciting for that extra monetary value in, in their jobs and, and in what they do and they shouldn't be. I mean, uh, even my aspect now, I mean, I had to turn to, to looking at making money. I didn't want to make money in this industry. I mean, I did a little bit, but not the way everyone else is. They're, they're basically robbing people. Exactly. They're, they're making profit out of pain. I refuse to profit out of pain. That's just my point right there. I want to see everybody get helped and healed. If I had to grow it and give it away myself, if I could. But... The thing is this, I will never profit off of pain. If I cannot help and profit, I don't want yeah. profit off of pain. Yeah. yeah, when you start making money, it's no longer helping. You're doing business. Exactly. Now, when yeah. you do the stiffen, now, let's get this clear on this, okay? When you do speeches and lectures and so on and so forth, or in some situations, even talking about products, you are helping individuals because this is 
a very wild west market. This is like we're in the gold rush, which is better known as the green rush. And yeah. you're going to have to do some profit in order to survive, especially fighting the laws. Because once you pass a law, cannabis law, no matter what state, Colorado is a perfect example. You're constantly having to go back to the legislators and fight to keep that law from being changed into something worse. And Colorado is still going through those things right now. So this is my point. A bill can be passed, true enough, as it stands. But you best better bet your bottom dollar if something ain't right about that bill. It's going to get challenged and it's going to be changes made because ain't nobody going to, you know, ain't everybody ain't going to keep their mouth shut and I'm one of them. You know, if I got to live here in this state and I got to suffer with some crappy cannabis and I bust my ass for X amount of years, you best better believe if they have to wheel me down to Columbia, I am going to be bitching because the point is this. We have the greatest opportunity to lead the South in getting a comprehensive bill that is not going to stake the high heaven like what Florida's doing. You cannot do a vertical bill. You can't. It don't work. Ask New York. Ask Florida. And any other state that's trying to do that right now. It's not working. These people are not buying the products that they have on the shelves. And they got dispensary owners crying the blues. I know this for myself because I see the post for myself. Now, one thing I've seen in, in uh, the, the southern states, and I'm pretty sure other states, is they, they have these low THC products, and, and for the other cannabinoids that are missing, they add in other oils and other things, but none of this stuff seems researched, you know, by the people that add it. They just try to add it and sell it just to mimic the other cannabinoids and say, oh, you know, you're getting this. None of it's being tested. None, I'm going to be honest with you. I would not give my child nothing they sell it in none of these southern states until they can show me it's tested by an independent lab that doesn't have their name attached to it. It's no way in hell. I will not do it. I had got, um, somebody had gave me some samples of different ones from different companies. I smelled them and threw them all in the trash. <laughs> now that's bad. You can smell them and throw them in the trash. Because it wasn't mine, but I, I, you know, denied or, or you know declined taking any because they wanted me to try it, and I'm just like, no, that that's okay. You know, it's supposed to be cannabis, and to me, it smelled like it smelled like a peach uh, cigar. So yeah, I smelled one that smelled like mint, one smelled like peach, and one smelled like straight garbage. Where, where the peach cigar has a little bit, bit of a mint smell too, so that's probably the same one we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And I and yeah. and, and, and um, I did one further. I poured a little bit of it out. And you know, put it on my skin. I, nothing should make your skin tingle. Keyword. That, yeah, that, that's strange. <laughs> Keyword. Put if you gonna give it to your child, test it on your skin first, please. If your your skin is tingling, put it in the trash. You can go ahead and consider you gave that person money, cause it shouldn't be doing that. I'm gonna just leave that out there, and we gonna have another class on that on another day. <laughs> but yeah, so. I, I mean, it's the money game here in this state. In North Carolina, I'll get so I'll get to the brass tax of that on the fourth because I go meet with the hen house, and um, we're gonna sit down and talk with them about um, the current bill they have there, eight um, 185 in North Carolina. But this is the thing that's fascinating in North Carolina. North Carolina has a hemp bill, and guess what? In the bill that they have in North Carolina. I think they give you a 100 by 60 plot that you can grow cannabis in. That they say your grow your um your space that um it can be grown in is um 100 by 60. I think I have to recheck the um numbers on that. And um the unique thing about that bill also, why it didn't die with the other bills, it's gonna be made into the constitution. The voters will get to decide. After it goes through whatever process it has to go through, that's the things I'm a little fuzzy on that I'm going to have to jump back on this evening um, to get that clarified in my mind. So I, when I be able to talk about it tonight, I don't sound like a blooming idiot. 
but um pretty much what it is it has to go through um it's beyond legislative they just can't kill it as and i think it has to go up to the supreme court the supreme court looks at it and see if it's in the realms of the constant being a constitutional law then it kicks get kicks back down to the voter in november 2018. you best better believe i will be helping my friends and family in north carolina fight to get that bill passed oh yeah hard oh, yeah. as hell about seeing you is you're not just about South Carolina you're about wherever you can be and position yourself to help and that's just amazing well it's like this we when we took the oath to defend that oath never goes away I have brothers and sisters in arms in North Carolina just like I do in South Carolina just like I do in Florida Georgia Alabama Louisiana so on and so forth but when you have family it's even closer when you got them combinations of you know brothers and sisters in arms you got family members you got people that you know in these states it makes it just a little bit more personal and by me being you know in the army then married to a soldier that was in the army for x amount of years he was i know people from every part of the united states to include 16 different countries personally that's a lot of folks and uh, i mean we shared a lot in those years with those people so it's just natural that instinct to help and protect those people come into play for me it's just something that has been in my soul and now that i found my niche i guess you can say um i use it accordingly and um i never tire of it because like i tell everybody nobody we're we're not free we're nobody's free until we're all free in the whatever state I wind up living in or currently in South Carolina, if they decide to get off their butts and get it together and pass the bill, I'm not going to stop. Just because South Carolina passes and North Carolina doesn't, let's use that as a hypothetical, um, I'm still not going to stop fighting for North Carolina because guess what? That's our neighbors. That's our friends. We got the same team. We share a heart. So... With that in mind, why, why, I mean, why don't more people do that? And they're coming out the closets now. They're coming and saying from different states, can we help? Oh, yeah. I mean, even South Carolina, the number of people who need it compared to other states, in my opinion, is just small. But there's still an outcry. And to me, that's amazing that, you know, there, there's this many people that do need it to the point that they don't want to go to the street and just get it from wherever they can because, I mean, of course, that's not the healthiest option all the time. No, it's not. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've got stuff. I mean, it, it's generally got mildew going on because uh, I'm guessing it's just sat up under somebody's house for a while. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, uh, you know, people shouldn't have to deal with that. They especially shouldn't have to give that to their children. But, but on the opposite of that, I mean, you got the stuff coming out of Alabama, you know, for the federal research. and it, it, it's. I wouldn't use that I mean, stuff, man. I've seen I mean, that stuff. I would not use it. I mean, the guys even who get those tin cans uh, of the joints... They're not getting the quality that they should be getting. Well, well, I mean, those joints that are rolled, if you look at the label on the front of it, it'll give you the date it was, uh, I guess, sent to you. But if you flip it over and look at the date that it was grown, it's almost 10 years old. Oh, my God. Yeah, all that stuff is nearly 10 years old. So, I mean, it's like they're almost trying to kill the research by letting all the cannabinoids die. Exactly. I mean, you wouldn't take meat or vegetables or any other food product and, and leave it out for that long and expect that basically it's going to still be good, especially for research. Yeah, tell and, me about uh, it. Yeah, so these guys who are getting it, they, from, what I, from what I hear, they, they, they have it rolled and basically all the small stuff, the keef and all that kicked out and they're basically left with the bigger little bud rolled up. And even still, that's taken away from what is needed. That is so true. Yeah. That is so true. Wow, that is crazy. But Michael, hey, um, are you doing anything at the time besides talking to me and sharing all your information? Are you um, running any pages or anything where people can find out more information? Because, man, you got a, a wealth of knowledge. Um, I, I, I did have a page before, but I took it down because, uh, I mean, there was only like one person following it. Um, I, I got a website I'm working on now, but it's, it's not for knowledge, it's just more for development. I, I'm going to try to work it into something where it benefits everybody, but it, it's still something that's setting their geek stuff, but I'm still working out the details. Like, I'm building 
a website and I'm trying to configure my server to where it's fast and to just a bunch of you know geek stuff basically it, it has nothing to do with 420 but I'm trying to uh, wean it over basically and, and try to benefit you know the 420 world with what I can do on IT uh, eventually and it, it's www.420.ag and 420.ag and uh, like I said it's, it's new it's, it's not even complete yet uh, but I, I've even got news share in there there's a blog link uh, and it I mean while I've been sitting here talking with you I've probably posted a hundred things and I hadn't touched a button and it's all related to industrial hemp to marijuana to, to everything in the news and uh, you know there's, there's a couple things out of place because it is auto fed but I mean if if anyone wants to try to stay up to date with all the states and what's going on all over the nation, um, I mean, it auto feeds. Like, I'll sit there and look at it some days on the blog, and before people start sharing it on my Facebook, I'm seeing it on my blog, which is amazing. So. Well, that is great. Well, you know, you know me, I'm always looking and sharing and caring and everything. But when you get that back up and you want to announce it on the air, you know you have a mic, open mic here. I'll be glad to um, just hit me up how you hit me up. And, um, We'll make a date of it, and you could go ahead and tell everybody about 420 AG. I'm excited when you go ahead and get it up and running, um, where you can tell everybody how to use it, what all you're going to have on the page and everything. So, Michael, I'd really like to thank you for your time today. You're a very, very informative young man, and um, I'm hoping that 2018 is the year that we have cannabis. Like I said before, I know this bill is not what everybody wants, but as I was always told, a piece of bread is better than none. Yeah. As yeah. sad as it sounds, and this is this is our piece of bread that we've been dealt with for right now, and all we can do is support it, nurture it, get it passed, and then dissect it like a frog. Cause um, we all know it's some things that that ain't right there that needs to be changed and um, gonna be changed now. Grow, I don't know, but it's some other things in the bill that stinks to high heaven that needs to have a second and third in case some cases fourth look but that's my personal opinion about that and I'm gonna leave it at that. Um once again I like to thank seven ten radio, iHeart Radio, the listeners, the fans, and without y'all it would be no me. Trust and believe that. As y'all listen to this show and learn and and everything, when I do this show, each day I learn something different about everybody that listens in, that calls in. Because everybody can do a part, but what it takes is you getting from behind the screen after you hit send on that last email, getting out, talking to three people, just three, three people that you don't know about how great cannabis is in your life, how it saved your life. And you you'd be surprised on what you find out about that person. Start with three. That's my number. And it'll always be three. That's my time. 710 Radio, thank you again. iHeart Radio, thank you again. The listeners, I love you. I truly do. Michael, thank you again for taking the time out to join the show with us today and take time and say hello and to share your opinions and thoughts today. I really appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Rosemary. I love everything you're doing and love you, too. Love you, man. Have a great day. Oh, yeah. You, too. Hey guys, that was Michael Lee here out of South Carolina. One of the people that I sit back and I chat with from time to time that actually keeps me doing what I do. I mean, you don't think, I can't comment on everybody's post on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, so just because I didn't comment don't mean I didn't see it and didn't mean I didn't like it. It just means I was busy, okay? Just keep that in mind, guys. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep it up, guys. Like I said, they can't do nothing unless you get on their ass and make them change their ways. Call, write, email, protest, do whatever you got to do. Just make sure whatever you do, you don't do like Kathy Griffin is. That can get you locked up. Anyway, that's my time, ladies and gentlemen. 710 Radio, iHeart Radio, in Rock Hill, South Carolina. It is Rosemary World of Cannabis, and I am out of here.